In October of 1995, Tupac Shakur signed with Death Row Records. Speedy witnessed the change in Tupac's personality. I can't lie to you. It was a change in Pac personality when he got down with Death Row. Because you got to remember this. He had just left from being with the thug life. You know, them all Crips. Rated off from Fodies, Big Sight from IVC, and Macadocious. But I believe he out the 40s. But to make a long story short, he came from hanging around straight Crips to be in an environment where it's Pac Rules and Crips. He was a loyalist. So he was loyal to whoever he was with. And that was the cause of his demise, just being loyal. Pac poked his chest out. Pac was outspoken. Pac wasn't a mark. I don't know what motherfuckers think. If he was with you, he was with you. Tupac gave nicknames to both Speedy and Corrupt. My name is Gotti Gotti. It was Young Gotti Gotti. Corrupt name was Young Gotti. Corrupt got his name from Tupac. I got my name when I was hanging around Pac then. But Pac gave him his name first. His name was Young Gotti. My name was Gotti Gotti, Young Gotti Gotti. Corrupt was my dog. That was my big dog. I love Corrupt. Cause without Corrupt, I would have never even been around at that time. It was because of Corrupt that I came around Death Row. Speedy also formed a friendship with Hussein Fatal. Fatal was my nigga. Fader was a live wire. He was cool as a motherfucker. He used to get drunk and wild out. I remember Fader and my brother Young Magic was in the car together. They had a white bitch in the passenger seat. That nigga was drunk and he was driving real fast and he tried to make the car hook slide into the into a parking space. And he hit a pole and Pac Lexus Land Cruiser. And he crashed it and shook the whole motherfucking building. The bitch had her hair stuck in the, <laughs> in the front windshield. They had to actually pull that bitch head back to snatch her hair out the windshield. That shit was crazy. And I think Pac sent the Fatal back because he was saying, yeah, nigga, you got to leave, nigga. You going back home because he crashed his Land Cruiser into the building. While hanging out at Death Row Records, Speedy struck up a friendship with members of the Mob Pyru gang. Neckbone was my guy. Buntry was my guy. I was cool with them dudes, especially Heron. Heron used to come over and come kick it with me. We was tight. That nigga liked me, and he knew I was a crit. He used to call Shook Fat Boy. He really liked me. That nigga was tight, man. I liked the Heron. He used to always look out. Like, nigga, this is some conus. I'd be in Compton. He'd be in LA. He'd actually be like, man, let's go up to the Slauson swap meet. I took him up to the Slauson a few times. We used to get high and just chill. During the mid-1990s, a highly publicized feud broke out between Death Row Records and Bad Boy Records. There was rumored to be a bounty placed on Death Row chains by their rivals. To keep it all the way 100, did nobody give a fuck about that? Because we were just all on some, we going to fuck them niggas up whenever we see them niggas. That's all it was. It was just like, when we see them, we fuck them up. Don't give a fuck up. About, you know, what they had bounty on and all that. That shit was like clown shit to us. That shit was like funny. Because it didn't matter no way. It was on no site. It wasn't nothing to talk about. You got to remember, we everywhere that we think they at. And once they tell me, I'm on my way. It wasn't no industry shit with me. It was street shit. So, did nobody give a fuck about that? To answer the question, nah. I never heard that at the time. It wasn't no conversation that Pac had with me about it. It was just always going to be like, we just going to spank them niggas. That's it. That's all. In 2018, Suge Knight was sentenced to 28 years for a hit and run death. Still being too straight, not knowing how to control his power because he had everything in the palm of his hands. He was just too involved in the streets. He got consumed by the street life by the power that he had. And then when he went to prison, and when he came back home, things had changed. But nobody really fucking with him the way they was fucking with him. He had the power that he had. And so he really went back to the streets instead of going back to the office. He should've went back to the office instead of going back to the streets. And he was trying to, you know, relive what he left. I love Shug, I can't lie. He was always a good man to me. He was a good man to a lot of people. 
It's a lot of people with a song today, doing music today, just taking care of their families today because of that man. He just didn't know when to say fuck the streets, fuck being the bad guy. He didn't know how to put the bad guy away. Watch the full BMF Speedy documentary only on InfoMinds.